All right, everybody, let's just have a basic video that talks about what we need to do for our standard. Okay, so we're looking at making an inference, making an assumption, making a prediction based on the numbers that are in front of us. So if we look at this student, they have started off with a question of, is there a difference? How do they compare? What's going on with boys' and girls' arm spans? So the proper wording here is talking about the median arm span and the uh, median arm span for boys and the median arm span for girls. So once we've got our question, we're looking at uh, what we think might happen. So here's some notes on a good question. Who are we investigating? Where is this numbers coming from? What do we think might happen? And why on earth would this be of any use to anybody at all? So if we look at this one, they're competing the median arm lengths for years 11, 12 and 13 boys and years 11, 13 and 12 girls. Weird way of saying it. So they think that the median for boys will be greater than for girls. And the benefits would be school blazer manufacturers. People who are making the blazers need to know they have longer arms for the boys. So we've got a bunch of numbers. Maybe we got them from census at schools. Maybe we got them from somewhere else. And here's our graph. So now we need to decide what that graph is telling us. Well, if you remember back to multivariate data, the first thing I notice is that this graph this box, this central 50%, does not overlap this central 50%. I can put a line down the middle here, and I can see that they don't overlap at all. So that's a lot of evidence that there's some difference between males and females. I can look at my medians, males 177, females 165. I can look at my mean, males 176 females 163. So that gives me an idea that there is a difference. One thing we're going to add this year are these little red bars. We call those our informal confidence intervals. It just is another way of really measuring where the average person will be. The average person should be somewhere in that red line based on all the information we've got from this particular group at this particular time. And we can see that those little red bars don't overlap. So we've got more evidence that there's a difference between these two groups. So now it's about writing that up in the proper way. The blazer manufacturers who know that boys on average have a longer arm than girls. I can tell that because of my graphs not overlapping and my informal confidence intervals not overlapping. Now, this is only true for boys in this place in this time. If this was a group of New Zealand boys and girls and I went to um, Cambodia, then this information would be useless there. Um, it might be that just this year we've got a particularly freakish group of boys and girls. And so next year's group might be totally different. So again, it's useful for now. It's useful for that group of people. But it's not much use for everybody in the whole wide world. We'd need a lot more information, a lot more studying to tell those sorts of things. So what are we doing? We're setting a question. We are doing a box and whisker graph. We're looking for differences and we are making a conclusion, are they different? Along the way, we're gonna stick in a new thing called an informal confidence interval. And at the end, we need to make a conclusion. So overall, that's a summary of what we need to do for inference. Making a prediction, is there a difference between two groups of people? Thank you and catch you again. Okay, have I been recording? And